Hello friends, this video on thermodynamics part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 13. Discuss a very new and interesting topic called enthalpy. First, before I even introduce what is enthalpy, let me tell you why do we need enthalpy. See, till now we have told that internal energy change, whatever we discussed, was discussed at constant volume. Correct? Because we told we don't want to uh, take care of so many issues, we told internal energy take will talk about these things only in case of constant volume. Now, most of the chemical reaction which we see, they take place in open air. For example, this one, you heat something into the burn it's open air. Uh, this, uh, all this kind of chemical reaction we see is open air, it's open, it's open from here, it's open from here. And when we talk about open air, we have constant one atmospheric pressure everywhere. So the pressure is constant, temperature and volume is not constant. So we note here, the pressure is constant in all this case, the temperature and volume is not constant. So what should we do now? Because we have been dealing with change in internal energy and we have been dealing with constant volume scenarios where things were really simple. The pressure volume work was not into picture. We, we, we added that as a separate kind of work. But we talk about um, internal energy change, we talk about the constant volume thing. We don't talk about the uh, pressure volume work. What if we have to add the pressure volume? See, we have discussed pressure volume work which is separate from the internal energy. When we talk about change in internal energy, we talk about constant volume only. But in this case, we all the experiments, most of the experiments we do in the labs is at constant pressure, not at constant volume. So whatever data or numericals we saw with constant volume won't be of much importance to us because maintaining a chemical reaction at constant volume is possible actually. People have done it, we'll also do it in the next few slides, but it's very really difficult. So what if we can get a way to measure all this change in a change at constant pressure, not at constant volume? How can we do this? See, what we have learned till now was change in internal energy is nothing but Q at constant volume, right? And the work done was zero. Why? Because if you see work done at constant volume is zero because work done is what? Minus Px delta V. This is zero. This is zero. So the this formula we have done till now at constant volume. Constant volume. So work done will be heat supply at constant volume. Assuming we are not considering the work done by the system. This was the formula we know. So at constant pressure, let, let's find the, this is constant volume. Let's try to find the internal energy at constant pressure. See, when I'm saying internal energy at constant volume only, that doesn't mean we can have, we can't have internal energy at constant pressure. But I'm trying to say, when you say delta U, that means you are talking about internal energy at constant volume only. So at, at constant pressure, if you want to find the uh, internal energy, that's what you want to find at constant pressure, it will become Q plus W, right? Because delta U is nothing but Q plus W. Since it's constant pressure, let's put the P here just to show it is constant pressure. So W we know is nothing but minus P external into delta V. P is constant here. So what I can write? instead of W, I can say that it is minus P into delta V. And that is nothing but my change in internal energy at constant pressure. So this is nothing but if you see U2 minus U1 at constant pressure. Delta U is nothing but U2 minus U1 at constant pressure is equal to QP is constant minus P. Delta V is what? V2 minus V1. So if you rearrange this, what you get is QP is nothing but U2 plus PV2 minus U1 plus PV1. This is U, this is U, this is V, this is V. So if you see, 
at constant pressure my heat flow is nothing but u plus pv2 minus sorry u2 plus pv2 minus u1 plus u2 so that means there's a new factor here u plus pv2 right is a new factor so why always write u plus pv2 can't i give it a new name so let me give it a new name this may be h2 this may be h1 thus i get a new formula that is qp is nothing but h2 minus h1 it is delta h so at constant pressure at constant pressure delta h sorry at constant pressure the heat transferred is nothing but delta h and that's what i'm trying to say see delta h as a new term which we got is nothing but delta u plus p delta v because h is nothing but u plus p delta v so delta h is nothing but delta u plus p delta v and you see at constant pressure the heat supplied or heat transferred is something which, is, which we, are, we really want to know there will be nothing but delta h and this delta h is nothing but change in enthalpy and h is the enthalpy and that's why we have coined a new term called enthalpy when you talk about the internal energy change at constant pressure see at constant volume things are simple so we use delta u only and we can just directly use the formula easily but at constant pressure we have the speed delta v part also coming into picture sometimes system work sometimes work is around the system when the volume is not constant right and we have seen that uh, pressure work vol uh, pressure volume work so to accommodate there to make our lives easier instead of using always u plus p delta v we use a term called h and h is nothing but my enthalpy and delta h is the enthalpy change and that is nothing but heat transfer at constant pressure we always are in touch with the heat transfer so heat transfer at constant pressure can be measured by change in enthalpy and that's why we have this new term called change in enthalpy correct and again same thing here change in enthalpy is negative for exothermic reactions which which gives out heat and change in enthalpy is positive for endothermic reaction which absorbs heat right because if q is positive if q is positive that means if this guy q is positive that means system has taken heat if system has absorbed heat that means q is nothing but delta h here system has absorbed heat that means it's endothermic system has absorbed heat and cooled down if q is negative that means system has given out heat system gives out heat that means it is exothermic so hope you understand why we need enthalpy because see we will talk about internal energy change you know talk about internal energy change with constant volume but that's not the scenario happen in the real world we have constant pressure and there we, that's why you, we use the term enthalpy it's one the same thing actually but you see enthalpy is something internal energy change plus p delta v this word this this part is taken care so you sum this you get enthalpy right so see if, if the volume is not constant this part will have some values right earlier this was zero because the delta v was zero but the volume is not the constant the pressure is constant this part will have some values and you take care of this part when pressure is constant and the volume is not constant you end up getting this value so instead of writing these two in addition form we coined a new term called enthalpy right so we talk about enthalpy talk about constant pressure constant pressure in the lab environment we talk about internal energy change normally we talk about constant volume so we got three different new formulas now the first we got was change in enthalpy is nothing but change in internal energy plus p delta v p delta v i can also use as delta n of gaseous form rt is gas we also got a new formula that is q at constant pressure 
change uh, heat transferred or heat flow at constant pressure is nothing but change in enthalpy of the system. Let us take some example of the enthalpy. One, if the water vapor is measured to be perfect gas, the molar enthalpy change for vaporization of one mole of water at one bar, 100 degrees Celsius is this. Find the internal energy change when the one mole of water is vaporized at one bar pressure, one mole of water is converted into ice. See, the question says that my water is a liquid, it goes to H2O gas. That is the vaporization. It goes in liquid, it evaporates and becomes gas on its own. Now, it says the molar enthalpy for the vaporization of one mole of water at this pressure is this. That means delta H is given. Enthalpy changes 41 kilojoule per molar scale. We have to find the internal energy change. We know the formula delta H is equal to delta U plus delta N of gas or T. We have to find delta U. Delta H is given. So I can find write the same equation as change in internal energy delta U is equal to delta H minus delta N of gas or T. Okay. So let's see. Delta H is what? 41 kilos. So I'll write here. 41 kilojoule minus. How many change of moles of water? It says that one mole of water is vaporized. Delta N is 1. Delta N of gas is 1. R, since everything is in kilojoule, so I'll use 8.3 into 10 to the power minus 3. R, T is what? 100 degrees Celsius, that is 373 Kelvin. 373 Kelvin. Right? So, this is kilojoule per mole. This is kilojoule per mole per Kelvin. And this is mole. Does it cancel? Kelvin, Kelvin, get cancelled. So, what I get is 41 kilojoule minus 3.096 kilojoule. You solve this, you get 37.904 kilojoule. So that is the change in internal energy in this case, where one mole of water is vaporized at one bar pressure at 100 degrees Celsius. The second question says that one mole of water is converted to ice. So here I have in this case water in liquid form, it becomes solid. What does the change in volume? From liquid to solid, the change in volume is almost, almost zero. So delta H is nothing but delta U plus P delta V. So if delta V is zero, this becomes zero. Delta H is almost equal to delta U. So delta U, right? So delta U I have to find is almost equal to delta H. So what is delta H? 41 kilojoule per mole. So that is my answer. Got it. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.